Kyrie Mike Leslie WFA. Um, I feel like during your time with Dallas, part of why you've had the success that you've had is because you've been able to just focus on basketball. In this series with so much hoopla surrounding your former time with the Celtics, there's blow up dolls of you outside the arena. There's a lot of things going on. What else is there? <laughs> there's <laughs> some, some things that I probably can't get what into right now. But I feel like I'm wondering from your perspective, I don't know if there was, everybody made a big deal of the shamrock on your pants and shoot around earlier this week, and I don't know if there was actually anything to that or not, but you made the comment post game the other night that you thought it was going to be louder in here. And I guess what I'm wondering is, has this been the hardest moment for you to laser in and focus on basketball because there is so much other stuff going on? No, not really. I, again, I've, I've been able to grow over the past few years to put basketball in perspective. This is an incredible experience that I get to live out for quite a few years of my life. I'm going to learn a lot of lessons that I'm going to apply to life after this. Um, I failed uh, miserably uh, while also not knowing how to compartmentalize or accept the emotions that come with failure and also being on the successful side, didn't know how to handle that either. Uh, so the past few years have, have been about that growth perspective for me and learning how to handle myself in situations and circumstances that are going to be um, more beneficial for me to learn now uh, than learning it when I'm 38 years old and I'm looking back at my career and, and I don't even know how to celebrate that. You know, I'm, I don't expect to be celebrated by everybody. I'm going to, um, you know, still be aware that a lot of people want to see me fail. But again, I think I pay attention more to the way that I'm celebrated from people that love me unconditionally and I go home and I have a peace of mind. And, um, you know, thinking about my time in Boston, I could go down a myriad of things that none of you in here know that I was dealing with. I don't think a lot of people would care. I think a few people would care or want to hear about it. And I would leave that space open in the future if you ever wanted to hear about it. But um, putting in perspective, it's just the blow up dolls, all the you know remarks that are getting said. That's that's basketball. When I leave out of here and I walk around Boston, I don't hear a lot of the things that I hear when I'm playing on the court. There's a lot of mutual respect. There's a lot of eye to eye communication that's um, built on just being human. And uh, they appreciate the things I do off the floor as well. So there are a lot of Celtics fans out there that still love me too, surprising to everybody. But um, when I'm on the street walking around, which I do, um, you know, it's a lot of love. I get a lot of embrace. I take pictures. My dad is here. He played at Boston University. Um, so there has to be a respect there because if anything happens to my family while I'm here, then it goes way beyond the game, you know? And I don't forget things either. Um, somebody threw something at me here <laughs> while I was here. I've, I've heard it all. Um, nobody asked me how I felt after that and why uh, it could be a little bit of a traumatic response when I'm back in this environment after somebody does something like that, you know? So um, things have changed since then. I've been um, able to accept what I cannot change, but also change the way that I look at things to be more positive. So this is fun for me, man. This is healthy. I'm glad that I could be up on this stage speaking authentically and, and then also go home and be at peace. Fourth row, Jeff. Uh, as you've kind of been in this environment multiple times now. Uh, by realizing that I've been in this league for 13 years, and I've been playing against the Celtics for quite a few years, and I have quite a few playoff series against them, whether wins or losses. Um, so I just try to uh, be aware that this is a new space that I'm in as one of the leaders of the team and with a new group. Um, and giving them that peace of mind, like I said, when things get tough is – we're going against a very historic team in the Boston Celtics, but we're a great team too, and we're on our way to be here. So we just got to remember that. And engaging with fans uh, here in Boston is always fun. Um, like I said last week, it's something I've turned the page over onto, uh, but people continue to ask me about it and what I think about it, which is cool too. Um, but yeah, this is what makes sports fun. This is what makes the stories fun. Um, getting a chance to go against a giant like this, whether it be just talking about the team or talking about the environment and the fans and how crazy it can get. Um, this is what I imagine it being like, you know, getting to this stage again, earning our way to be here with my teammates and uh, being able to put our best foot forward, going against the best of the best. That's, that's all you dream of. Um, everything else is just extracurricular. Last question, back center. Asari Thompson. Um, I was wondering how you managed to stay locked in this deep into the season to take care of everybody. And how do you train in order to get to this point in the season? Because, you know, after my rookie, I learned that I, we haven't been playing for like a month and a half, but you guys are still going like every day. So I was just wondering how you're able to take care of your body and how you're trained for that. Yeah, I I would start off with this. So I try not to get FOMO as best you can just because you're so used to 
uh, playing every single day, working out every single day towards a goal. And now that that goal isn't necessarily there to win the championship, uh, you have to set other goals. And that comes from a personal uh, standpoint. You know, what do you want to accomplish bringing it to next season? It starts now while no one is watching, while it's just you by yourself or with your brother, or you're playing five on five. Just working on the things that everyone said that you weren't great at or that you could not do or you see within yourself that you need to improve. Um, because you're seeing how hard it is to get here and how long you have to stay locked in, as you said. So um, I've, I've been able to find some, some peace of mind throughout this, this journey, throughout this year of just making um, this phrase, like our, our team bonding thing, like just peaking at the right time. Um, some teams peak really early. Some teams peak in the middle of the season. Some teams start peaking at the end. Some teams get into the playoffs or get deep into the playoffs and they peak. Uh, so it just depends on where you are as a team and your understanding of what you're doing and, and also appreciating all the hard work that it took to get here. You know, a lot of our peers uh, are watching. They're trying to get back to where we are, get here. Uh, so we got to be aware that the hunger is going to be in you more next year. Um, but we're also going to be hungry, too, to, you know, show why we're one of the best in the world. Two teams left. Dream come true as a kid to be on a final, see the, the court change a little bit, see all the stickers, see the 600 media members and conditions that we get. Um, it could be a lot, but it's also uh, something that you want to appreciate because you never know when you're going to get back. So take your time, but also work your tail off right now because I know that I'm going to have to get ready for you guys next season. So. Thank you, Kyrie. We'll get started. Boy, man, and CLNS Media. Kyrie, you talk about the environment. I know you've talked a lot about the crowd. How, how have you kind of learned in that environment to you know handle it? Um, is it better to just ignore it? Do you engage with particular fans? Like, how did that kind of play out in game one um, as you've kind of been in this environment multiple times now? Uh, by realizing that I've been in this league for 13 years and I've been playing against the Celtics for quite a few years and I have a, quite a few playoff series against them, whether wins or losses. Um, so I just try to uh, be aware that this is a new space that I'm in as one of the leaders of the team and with a new group. Um, and giving them that peace of mind, like I said, when things get tough, is we're going against a very historic team in the Boston Celtics, but we're a great team too, and we're on our way to be here. So we just got to remember that. And engaging with fans uh, here in Boston is always fun. Um, like I said last week, it's something I've turned the page over onto, um, but people continue to ask me about it and what I think about it, which is cool too. Um, but yeah, this is what makes sports fun. This is what makes the stories fun. Um, getting a chance to go against a giant like this, whether it be just talking about the team or talking about the environment and the fans and how crazy it can get. Um, this is what I imagine it being like, you know, getting to this stage again, earning our way to be here with my teammates and uh, being able to put our best foot forward, going against the best of the best. That's, that's all you dream of. Um, everything else is just extracurricular. Again, on the second round, you've been part of multiple star duos. Um, how does debate about whose team is it, who's the best player on the team, uh, affect the team? You said, how does it? You know, debate, discussion about whose team is this, you know, who, who's the best player on the team? How does that affect the team? And, and that, you know, as a you know, part of the star tandem, yeah. how do you handle that? Um, by doing your best not to pay attention to it, because a lot of people don't know what they're talking about, uh, specifically if you've never played that position or been on a team at that level where um, you have to go through it yourself. And I know that we have people that appreciate the game of basketball that speak on it. But at the same time, it's it's an everyday thing when you're on the team with you know other guys that add value to the team. They have skill sets, they work on their game, and they want to be appreciated too. So I do my best to nonchalantly push that conversation to the side of you know 1A, 1B, or whose team is it, is this, that. I'm just here to play basketball. It's a dream come true to be at this level. I had to work extremely hard. Um, and I've been a winner my whole entire life. I've obviously had some failures and lost, but um, done a lot more winning, um, used to it. So in order to be on that type of frequency or that uh, goal, you gotta be selfless in your approach. And obviously you're not gonna get it right all the time, but as a teammate, you just wanna push those those other things to the side that don't really matter or, or get you better as a team. You know, so we just leave it to everybody else to argue whose whose team is in, who has the most responsibility. It's it's all our jobs to be prepared. So yeah.